Good morning. What happens when the princes confront Jehoiakim with the scroll? Today we're in Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 20 to 26. And they went to the king into the court, but they stored the scroll in the chamber of Elishama the scribe and told all the words in the hearing of the king. So the king sent Jehudi to bring the scroll, and he took it from Elishama the scribe's chamber. And Jehudi read it in the hearing of the king and in the hearing of all the princes who stood beside the king. Now the king was sitting in the winter house in the ninth month with a fire burning on the hearth before him. And it happened when Jehudi had read three or four columns that the king cut it with the scribe's knife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth, until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid, nor did they tear their garments, the king nor any of his servants who heard all these words. Nevertheless, Elnathan, Deliah, and Gemariah implored the king not to burn the scroll, but he would not listen to them. And the king commanded Jeramael, the king's son, Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdael, to seize Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord hid them. So, first of all, they put the scroll in a separate place. They put it away. They didn't really want that to come near the king. But the king, when he heard the words, he said for it, and they sort of had to bring it. So they brought the scroll. The king's at his winter house, and they're sitting in front of an open fire to keep warm. Now, after some of the scroll has been read, the king takes the knife and he begins to cut off pieces of the scroll and throw it into the fire. And he does this until the entire scroll is consumed. Some of the princes protested, actually several of them, but, but some didn't protest. And the king was just being, you know, being Jehoiakim. So he burns the entire scroll in the fire, and then he sends Farouk and Jeremiah to be arrested. But it says God hid them. Now, you can't get rid of God's word by burning it in a fire. This is ridiculous. Jehoiakim's act in burning, destroying God's word by throwing it in the fire is, is very high-handed. It was the highest disrespect. God's mercies toward Jehoiakim have been very great, but this is what he gets for it. Now, Jehoiakim takes things too far. Here's a question. How much are you and I disrespecting God's word? How much are we respecting it and disrespecting it? When God sends his word, he has a purpose. If we ignore it, how different are we than Jehoiakim, who actually burned it in the fireplace? He's the creator. We're the created. His word is a, a gift to us. To disregard his word is to disregard our maker. Why would we do that? You know, there's no higher disrespect than to ignore or try to go around the word of God. Let's pray. Your Father in heaven, we want to be right. The example that's been set by Jehoiakim here is a terrible example, burning the word of God in the fire. Lord, we know how this is going to end, and, and yet there he is. Father, please help us to love and respect your word. Help us to drink from it every day, every morning. Help us to take it into our mind, take it into our heart. Help us to want, to desire, Lord, to, to go by your word, to know what it is. So, Lord, we pray that you will help us opposite of Jehoiakim. And rather than burning your word in the fire, Lord, that your word would burn as a fire in our heart. Please, Lord, change your people. Draw us close. Make us like Jesus. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the king cuts the scroll in pieces and he burns it in the fire as though this will be the end of the matter. Far from it. Let us download this word and get it into our, into our mind and into our heart. And you will do mighty things, miraculous things, for us. God be with you this day.